times here. You've got the mic, Kristen, so you can start. Uh, what's most special about Carondelet beyond your cross-country accomplishments, beyond what you learned with Helen while running and running and running some more? What do you recall as special, fond, funny? Take us back to your days as a Carondelet Cougar. Okay, um, I think the most special are the people I met, the friends that I made. Um, like Tiff just talking about, it's a perfect segue in that she's talking about how she does things to be a role model to people. Well, Tiff told me tonight she's the ultimate cougar here because she's over 40 and the rest of us are not. Okay, okay. So I will say to Tiff, she was my role model. I thought I had died and gone to heaven when I got to ride with Jen, one of, Ania, one of my best friends, another person I met at Crondelet, in her car. And Tiff, you were a role model to me and you inspired me to be the teammate that I am to my amazing teammates. Um, on my team, who I, I look at them today, and even though I haven't seen some of them in years, they, they do feel like sisters to me. So I think, and it wasn't about the running or any of that, it was just really the friendships and the amazing, inspiring women I met. And not to mention the most inspiring of them all, <laughs> um, Helen. Um, anyway, I think that's really what makes the most to me the people and the special women I met at Crondelet. All right, pass the mic. Helen, similarly for you, beyond sports during your time here, what was so unique about this place? Probably the same same thing that Kristen said. You know, it's, it's funny, um, leading up to the Hall of Fame um, evening tonight, I, I had a lot of time to kind of reflect back on my time at Crondelat and um, I think Kristen and I have had multiple phone conversations at six in the morning about this, but um, just what an amazing uh, community existed at Crondelat and how how thankful as I look back when you're in it you're kind of just you're coaching and you're going from meet to meet and you don't really have a chance to sit back and reflect on the community and the support and um, the amazing group of young women that I was fortunate enough to work with and the amazing families I, I, I wasn't sure if I was more excited to see the girls tonight or the parents of all the girls because what an amazing just um, community. You can keep the mic. Cross country has got to be one of the most difficult coaches, sports to coach. You run, you run, you run, and you run some more. To recruit athletes to run, to go through walls they didn't know they could. How do you inspire youth? to run at their best and exceed their limits? And how does that translate to life lessons for them? Yeah, I mean, I think we were fortunate. We, we created sort of that culture of excellence and I had an amazing staff. I mean, they're all sitting over here at this table. <laughs> but um, how do you inspire them when you have fun? And, and obviously that, that component is so critical in being successful. If you're happy and you're having fun, you'll be successful as long as you work really hard. And so we, we did have a lot of fun. Um, and it's funny, watching that video, I was listening to Marianne say, you know, they weren't overconfident and I'm going, they weren't? I remember the night before the state championships, I was nervous because they were having so much fun <laughs> deciding what they were going to wear on the podium. And I was like, uh-oh, what if we don't win? This is going to be really bad. But they, they just had a really good time. So that I think having fun is a critical component in being successful. Okay, Kristen, I think you might beg to differ. It can't be all fun. It's got to be grueling at times. And how did this lady to your right push you beyond what you ever thought was possible and your teammates? Um, well, so that, so I thought I was a soccer player when I came to Crondelette, and then I met Helen, and she, she taught me otherwise. And she always told me this, and I still remember it to this day, and I think of this when I coach my kids' soccer, and she says, everyone always punishes by running. They make kids run if they're late for practice or they misbehave. And she goes, why does running always have to be the punishment? You used to say that. And it's true. So people in their head think running must not be fun. But I saw it completely different. We would go on runs and we would talk and talk and talk and talk and build friendships and relationships that are, you have this bond because you're running and you're talking. So to me, I never truly saw it as a chore, yes, it hurt like hell. <laughs> but I don't know, that's the sick part of it. I guess you crave that, because you know at the end there's a huge reward. Um, 
Anyway, I think I got lost over what else. But what, how did she inspire me? Helen, oh my goodness, um, she made you and all of us on my team sort of be fearless and believe things in yourself that you thought were impossible. There was a girl in high school that beat me over and over and over and over again and over again. And um, my beginning of my senior year, Helen asked me on a run, are you prepared to be the national champion? And I looked at her and I honestly thought I misheard her. And, I, and she goes, well, you should start preparing. She looked me dead in the eye, you should start preparing. And what do you know, at the end of the year, I don't know how it happened, but I was the national champion and it was through hard work and teammates that believed in me and we believed in each other and it made it fun and it made me continue wanting to work hard and to run. It was worth the pain, that running, because I was with my friends. All right, an amazing role model in Helen. And how, how do you do it? You're the head men's and women's cross country coach at USF. You're the head track and field coach. You're a mother of three, a supportive wife. What's your message to your team, to these young athletes back here who will be moms someday? How do you do it all? How do you juggle when all of us have struggles with family, life, and fun? What's your secret? Share with us. Um, don't overthink it. <laughs> because you don't have time. Um, the secret is, I and mean, honestly, don't, don't overthink things. I think sometimes we can, um, try and talk ourselves out of things or we can try and like how are we going to do this and we spend all this time trying to figure out how we're going to do something i think you just got to go do it and i think if you if you're um, passionate about what you're doing and um you believe in it then you just go do it excellent Kristen, after you were the 96 Footlocker national high school individual champion you went on to georgetown you went on, went on to the olympic trials what are the life lessons you have taken from your cross-country career that make you the powerful young lady you are today? All right, life lessons. Um, be gutsy, have heart, and keep it fun. I think those are the life lessons. If, if you do those things, I think you'll be successful and you're passionate and you surround yourself with the right people. I think, I, I don't know, I think that's all I can, <laughs> I think that's it. All right, anything else you want to share? I just think it's amazing. We're a small, all-girls school in Concord, California. And when I was telling people I was going home for this event, and then I was telling them the other women that were being, you know, two gold medal, gold medalists. I mean, where do you, Olympic gold medalists? It's just amazing to be a part of this community and this group. And I think we at Crown Delight accomplish great things, and it's pretty amazing. And so I'm, I'm so honored to be here, and I'm so glad my brother and my sister and my mom and my dad could be here. Um, and I, I just, I, I thank Rondelette too for putting something like this on because it's rare that you find a school with such phenomenal athletes and, and women. So thank you so much for hosting this. And Helen, final words from you if you'd like to share. Um, I, I guess my message probably for the, for the young student athletes is, is just make the most of the opportunity and, and be thankful because um, Time passes really quickly, and you, you really want to treasure every moment you have and be thankful for what you have. And then to the, this amazing, obviously, Hall of Fame class. This is phenomenal, unbelievable to be inducted in this class. And this 96 state championship team, to see these women here this evening and to see how they look exactly the same. But, but so also, do so does she. <laughs> but also to see what they've achieved um, personally and professionally in their lives as a coach. I mean, that's, you know, obviously you, you want your student athletes to run fast and you want to win championships, but the most special thing is to see, see them, how many years? What? How many years has it been? Uh, what? 19? 19. 19. 19. 20? I don't know. 22. 22. I, don't, I didn't do math. I ran fast. <laughs> to see them 22 years later and see the, who they are, I mean, wow, as a coach, that's the most amazing thing that you can actually ask for. So, so proud of them. Okay, wait, right, can I have one, one more thing to oh, sure. just because I'm neglecting, party. I'm neglecting Helen here. I'm negle no, I just want to say, and I think I speak on behalf of our team, you, when you go to high school, you don't get to pick who your coach is, and I think we can all say that we lucked out, and you are more than a coach to me, and I think to everyone that you coached, 
Um, you, thank you for all you did. You, you really helped build a family, and I used to go to your house on Sundays and eat pancakes before you had kids. So anyway, and JW and Bailey, and who else? And Mayor, of course. Where's Mayor? And Stu, they're all here. Anyway, just thank you to the coaches. I didn't say that, too, because we didn't get to pick our coaches, and we lucked out big time. Um, so thank you so much. All right, and now in her coaching voice one more time. You must summon your team like they were late for practice to get them on the stage to take a picture. We're going to have the awarding of the plaque. Ready, set, go, Helen. Just get them up here. Terry Bartwomas.